forgetting something? No, we're doing a little something weird today. I'm doing a whole lot of recommendations and answering a question, but I'm answering the question in a way that is kind of like a review, so kind of a hodgepodge. So let me first start off by recommending this book right here, The Wells of Ur. If you like the channel, if you like what you see, this is a series of novellas, short stories by a collection of wonderful authors, uh, one of whose names you might recognize, and then this guy here, J.B. Jackson, he has a book on Kickstarter right now called Shagduk. I'll put a link in the description. Get Wells of Art, give him a read. Once you read this, you're going to want to back that Kickstarter. That's your first recommendation. Your second recommendation is for this right here, and I have it as an electronic book, so I don't have an actual paper copy. Um, Hellfire... I don't have, this is a kind of a weird one. Jim Webster has a whole series of books on a, I think it's a, like a low-end sci-fi war game called, is it Hellfire? I don't even know what it's called. Hellfire Campaigns is what I'm going to talk to you about today because if you remember this little scenario that we ran here on the channel... This is a fall of her, not to be confused with the wells of her. The fall of her is a battle that we did for a friend's Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And I've had a couple of people ask me, well, how did you do that? Like they can see how it's done, but the like actual mechanics are a little bit rough. And the answer to that lies within Hellfire campaigns. I want to read you an excerpt of this in a moment. First, let me explain what Hellfire campaigns is. It is a it is a way to set up a miniatures campaign of your own. Jim Webster uses a deck of cards to generate continents, and then um, the suits and the values of the cards that are laid out will help you determine the terrain and the politics of the situation. And then once you have that in gear, then you can start figuring out, well, why do these two countries hate each other? Why do these two countries like each other? You can start laying out some political situations and start ramping up to a full-blown war. It's a great little inspiration for generating your own campaigns. He also includes, now, I should point out, Hellfire, from based on my reading of this book here, is more about kind of the grotty end of warfare. These are colonies that are on the ragged edge. They don't have, like... United States of American scale budgets where they are protecting an entire planet with their military, right? Not a huge military industrial complex. So anytime there are belligerents, there's a very good chance that the governments have saved all of their money and given it to their cronies until there's an emergency. And then they say, oh, shoot, we better print up a whole lot of money and hire ourselves some mercenaries. So kind of at that mercenary end of the scale. But the real reason I want, so I highly recommend it. This book also includes a second campaign, which is more of a pre-colonial, like Northwest frontier kind of campaign where you you lay out your deck of cards. You actually need two decks of cards for laying that out. It generates the terrain and the setting is a kind of late imperial, but we're talking like the Rajah. You know, those grand poobahs who have lots of little kingdoms that they're they're playing off one another and they're juggling the politics. It helps you set up the terrain, set up the politics, and there's a lovely little solo mini campaign that you do to determine which kingdoms hate which and who's got enough money to pay the Raja to keep the Raja's army from coming up. Very nice, and it can be very easily reskinned, I think, for fantasy. I need to get myself a physical copy of this book so that I can show you how it works. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Also, in that same vein, Jim Webster, he's, like I said, he's got a number of different books. One of the other ones he has is called Hell by Starlight Campaigns. This is more of a traveler-style campaign set up for you. I've only read about half of it because it goes through the whole process of getting your spaceship, figuring out how, how big your crew is, and it's very hard sci-fi for those of you that believe in such a genre. And then he's got a way of generating you know, a star system. And he's got means of generating the economics of what do I want to buy? Where do I want to go? This book also includes, so this is a Hell by Starlight campaigns. It includes some very interesting mechanics for special missions. Don't read the back half of the book until you play through the game. And then when the specials come up, they can affect the game proper. They can affect each other. It looks really interesting. So for you solo war gamers, highly recommend Hell by Starlight campaigns. If you want to do some some traveler style, you know, light 
freight hauling, maybe a little bit of smuggling on the side just between you and me. All right, with that said, I highly recommend those. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the fall of Ur and how exactly you can arrange to run through a scenario like that. Very useful for those of you that are doing role-playing game campaigns. You've always dreamed about doing mass battles, but it's always seemed a little bit too out of reach because you are a little bit intimidated by the need to buy large armies of miniatures and paint them all up, and you don't even like the idea of using flashcards. But you want to run through the same kind of iterative process where you say, okay, Let's look at the situation, figure out what the resources are on each side of the of this, and then what the potential strategies are, and take a look at how those strategies will intersect until we reach a critical node where we have to make a decision, and we don't want to make that decision. We want the fates to do that. And that is where we go back to Jim Webster's Hellfire campaigns. Because he's got a little thing he calls... Um, what is it? Dice Moderated Storytelling. This is a very powerful thing. I'm going to read you a full excerpt. The simple version is, hey, so the Wargaming Guide, there's our friend. William Sylvester uses a very similar process to this. And he uses, and what he does is he says, come up with three strategies and then let the dice decide which of those three strategies is going to work. He calls that the solo campaign, what is it? It's, it's SCMR. And what does that stand for? It's the solo campaign management randomization or something like that. Or is it route one, two, three? And then we do, let me see if I can find it right here. The, if it's not for a scammer, better explain the scammer concept. I gotta, there we go. Solo campaign mobilization rules. There you go. But I tend to use it throughout the campaign. Let me read you verbatim. From Jim Webster. Just, just a couple of paragraphs here because I think this really illustrates how to use solo campaign management and how to do this kind of very neutral, very, you know, you're removing any kind of arbitrary judgment on your side because you're letting the dice decide. All you're doing is you're setting up the, the dominoes and then you're letting the dice decide which way they fall. All right. So dice moderated storytelling by Jim Webster. At its most simple, when you need to make a decision and decide what is going to happen, you have to decide on a range of possible results. Some decisions are simple. Yes or no, left or right, toss a coin, let that decide. But what if when you look at the circumstances, yes or no ought to include an element of perhaps? It's at this point you start to look at a wider range of options. Choose at least three options, assign a number to each, and roll the dice. The dice tell you the one that happens. I try to have a range of results so that on a D6, rolling one or two will mean things sort of calm down. Rolling five or six will mean something more extreme happens, whilst three or four is somewhere in the middle. When you have politicians and political factions squabbling over something, I tend to have an even wider spread. On a roll of one, it is a case of, and with one bound he was free. They have managed to solve the problem. But on a six, at the other end, they've managed to make a very middling sort of problem into a major crisis. But as a general rule, we have a threefold split. On a one or a two, things get better. On a three or a four, things stay about the same. But with three being a little more positive than a four. And on a five or six, things get distinctly more messy and unpleasant. That's all you got to do, guys. You just set up your situation... Come up with a range of possibilities. Let the dice decide. And I really like this little wrinkle that Jim adds with, hey, on a one, things get better. On a six, they get worse. The other thing you need to do is read a lot of books. All right. One of the my favorite series is The Black Company by Glenn Cook. And in the very first half of the very first book of the series, there is a fall of Constantinople situation where you see what it looks like when a mercenary army is present at the the at when a coup takes place and they have to get out of dodge before the successful coup operators show up and oh get out of dodge with the money too read as much fiction as you can read as much history as you can because that will give you the tools to be able to look at a situation like the fall of a of a city following a siege of some sort and to see how that happens right oh well you know these walls are impregnable well how impregnable are the pockets of the guy that you can bribe to open the gates for you, right? What kind of trickery can we use? What kind of strategies can you use? Do, do we do a frontal assault? 
Do we mine under the city walls? Do we bribe somebody? You know, and then how successful are these things, right? Read lots of books. That's the best thing I can give you. Tap into that knowledge. Tap into the movies that you've seen. Come up with that, those possibilities. And if you don't have any firm idea of what's going to happen, bear in mind, you can also like tip the scales just a little bit, right? Maybe things get better on a one, two, or a three. They stay about the same on a four or five. And the only way they get worse is on a six. So it's more likely things get better. You can kind of tip it a little bit, but you still have your hands clean because, hey, I rolled a D6 and that's what came up. So bunch of recommendations here. Solid writing. Great for solo war gaming. The, I don't have the, this one, I don't, you know, again, I don't have a physical copy. This one is for setting up a war game campaign and setting up the political factions and rivals that lead to a shooting match. You can set up a nice cold war and then run it hot. Because eventually you're going to roll that six, right? And then, of course, this is for, if you want to do a little Tramp Freighter solo war gaming action, give this a shot. Four recommendations, one solution for, I don't want to say all your role-playing game needs, but hey, that kind of gives you a better insight and mo a more thorough walkthrough of how we do what we do. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I'm praying for you.